Welcome to another GA Canine training video, folks. And today we're featuring Valiant working major intersections in a tracking trailing condition. Okay, so one of the things that a lot of people don't really understand is, is the effect of wind and more importantly, lots of traffic at a major intersection on the track and trail itself. Um, when a dog is following odor, tracking a human, they're following multiple sources of odor. Number one, ground disturbance, which is the most common and typical thing that people in uh, tracking follow. Uh, but then also we have blown human odor. As the human body off gases, there's a significant amount of scent that will fall and spread to different places. And this is going to be very environmentally affected, as too is the ground disturbance odor too. This odor also has a tendency to move and spread out a little bit. That's what I was going to ask. Um, and as the track is impacted by numerous different types of environmental conditions, in particular wind that's even There's natural no or, or uh, environmentally um, produced by vehicles and other types of things, uh, it has a significant impact on how the dog works that track and trail. And you're going to see this because we're going to work into a progressively more difficult condition. Right now we're in a nice soft surface environment, easy track, and we're going to track across a relatively easy intersection coming up right here. And what I want you to notice is how easily the, the canine picks up the crossing point and then crosses directly over to the side. Now there's two reasons why this is happening. One, Number one, the width of the intersection is relatively narrow and she's probably detecting a fair amount of odor on the cement but more importantly on the other side so she can detect where to go immediately. But one of the things that happens as soon as she gets back over to this other side of the intersection she starts to get on top of the track line but as soon as this occurs right about now she's going to start reacting to blown odor. The track line is right here goes straight ahead to the gas station ahead of us. But what Valiant does is she peels off to the right to the wood line. Obviously still in odor, and you're going to see this with a lot of good body language that's telling you that she has scent. The problem is, is this is human blown odor that's now gone up against the trees in the bushes. She's really, really on, on top of it. But it's important to understand that this is blown odor that's being pushed up against the wood line. From a body language perspective, the only thing that we can say that perhaps something has changed a little bit is a little bit of inconsistency with direction of travel. We no longer have a clear linear path. We have some left and right movement. We also had a little bit of a tail droppage. Not much, but just a little bit. And one of the things that's going to happen here very, very quickly is she's going to get strong right back on odor. And that's because the bulk of the odor is blown up against this tree line. Hold on, mama, hold on. Ah. Hold on. Hold on, you're all messed up. Hold on. Hold on, you good. Hold on. Hold on, hold on. Okay. In a way, we could think of this almost as a scent pool in its own right. And as she works the edge of it, or the fringe, she's trying to get back to the bulk of the odor that she can actually really work. And in doing so, one of the things that begins to happen is she gets what we call scenting of the apex. Right here, she's detecting odor on the other side of the road that's dragging her across. She wants to take this crossing right here. Unfortunately, we can't do it due to traffic. It's just not safe. But she's telling us this is where the odor source is. This is what we call the apex of the turn. The apex of the turn is where the bulk of the odor blows off the turn with the prevailing wind and down in a particular direction. And a lot of times this, is, this will cause the dog to shoot past the turn, overshoot it, and then circle around and pick it up on the other side. It will also cause the dog sometimes to undershoot it and cut the turn or cut the track before the turn actually takes place. Now Valiant here now picks up the exact track line. This is the track line of our subject right here. And you're gonna notice that as soon as she gets to the intersection, she's going to wanna to start taking a crossing. And unfortunately, again, due to traffic, it's one of those things where we have to slow her down and stop her. And when we do slow her down and stop her, it's important that we let her know that it's not a big deal that she's being stopped. One of the biggest things that handlers sometimes do is they'll stop the dog at the intersection and because of traffic, and the dog takes it as a correction because they're not encouraged to maintain that odor. 
The only thing they do is they feel that pullback. So one of the things I like to do here in this type of situation is once the dog has kind of isolated the odor for me and told me the direction they want to go, if we can't safely cross at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the dog in the direction that they wanted to go, encourage them, tell them good girl, good boy, whatever it might be, and as soon as it's safe to go with the light or if we have traffic stop, we'll let them go. Green light, I'll let you go. And remember, when you get about two-thirds of the way across, let her have the lead. You're going to do it on a green light, so it should be nice and safe. <laughs> Hold on, you're good. Right now? Yep. Now, once we do get across, it's important that the dog makes the decision there and not the handler. So if it's safe to do so, once we get close to the end, I'm going to let that dog have all the leash and try to make a good decision on where that track might be. Now, one of the problems that we have with this intersection, just like on the far side that we came from, we have a lot of windblown odor that we're dealing with. And so you can see right now, Valiant really has no odor, no track direction. She's coming back, but she's a little unsure what to do. She does not have scent detection at this point. This is what we call hunting behavior. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna circle back, cut back towards where the intersection was and see if she can pick it up a little bit closer. And you're gonna notice really, really quickly when she picks up the track line. So here's kind of an example of what uh, checking the dog at an intersection can actually do. Uh, Valiant's being checked at this point because, uh, you know, we, we see this vehicle coming and when she's checked, she redirects her direction of travel because she takes it as a correction. Um, she thinks she's being told not to do what she was doing, so she goes the wrong way. Now, when she comes across, one of the things that you're going to notice is she starts detecting the odor of the people in this vehicle. She clearly knows that it's not the correct odor, but she's still kind of interested because it was part of her track originally. Now, what I really like about her at this point is she shoots across the street on her own because she remembers where the track line is, and she picks it up once again. There's your track right there. And this is probably blown up in here. More distraction. Huh? Tails all the way down. Let's go. Right, not an odor, not a big deal. She just went up the driveway with that blown odor. Watch what happens when she gets the track again. And right on the heels of that correction that she made, unfortunately now she encounters some distracting animal odor inside this area of this residence. It doesn't last for very long. She's corrected off of it, and she has to come back to the track. Okay, lots of hunting, but not an odor, you can tell. She's just excited to be looking into something new, but that's not odor. As she comes back towards the road, you're going to notice through body language that she hits the track line quite nice, nice and easily. Super obvious to read. A blind man can actually pick this up. But even though she nails the road crossing pretty close, um, it's not quite right on. And that's due to the fact that even though this road has less traffic, it has traffic. We have a significant amount of blown odor that's going to blow past the turn. Now, she's waiting for traffic to pass. Her handler is encouraging her, telling her it's okay, it's perfectly okay to be stopped and just wait, which encourages her. And this encouragement is important because she's not taking those line checks as a correction. Where she crosses is down about 20 yards past the turn. Notice what happens when she hits this turn. Nails it quite nicely and easily. Now, this is the typical situation with intersections. Intersections are always going to create blown odor where the scent is going to go Blown, be blown past the turn due to a lot of wind from vehicles and also just environmental wind. And when this happens, the dogs have to be able to learn these 
conditions and these situations. It's not necessarily very easy. Uh, and more importantly, you can't just stay right on top of the track line, expect the dog to be true and correct to it at all times. It's just not physically really possible with the nature of scent in a condition such as this. Unfortunately, the nature of scent in an urban environment is not such that you can have an exactly linear track footstep to footstep in real life situations. It's just not natural and it usually doesn't occur. And it's one of the reasons why a lot of times with traditional tracking it doesn't work so well in a hard surface urban environment. Um, and it's because you're just going to have bits and pieces of odor that are there on the track and then other times where it's blown into different locations. We have to have a dog that can be able to come off the track line find it on its own and then come back to the track line when necessary. The dog has to be able to go back and forth. Now the cool thing is is that dogs innately have an amazing ability to do just that. They don't have to stay on top of the track line. They can follow blown odor really really easily and if trained to do so can easily come back when that track line presents itself. This is what we really need a dog to do to be able to go back and forth with the different types of scent pictures that are given to them.